Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, this is another video in our Divi for Beginners series, and we're going to show you how to start using the Divi Builder in this video with a new page. So let's get started. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to create a new page. I'm just going to call it Builder. And I'm going to hit the Use Divi Builder button right there. Once it opens, it's going to give you these three options. We used a pre-made layout in yesterday's video. Let's use a build from scratch today. So I'm going to hit the start building. Initially, it's going to put in a section and ask you to add your first row. So I'm going to put in a row with a single column here. You can use any layout you want. Now let's perhaps use a call to action for this. Call to action is a module with a button, which is asking people to click on something. You may have noticed there's no button here. We'll be going into more detail of these modules over the coming series. I'm just going to build this page very quickly. Before a button will appear on a call to action module, you have to give it a link. Now it opens up. We're always under the content tab when you open up. Put your text in here. Put your title in there, obviously. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Put what you want your button to say right there. As we mentioned earlier, there's no button at the moment. And obviously put content here. And this is just a WYSIWYG section. You can align items, paragraph, make titles, add media if you want to, bold, italicize, and make bullet lists. Again, I'm going to leave that just as it is. Always under content, you're going to find links. This is where you put your button link in. And also you can have your module link somewhere else or the same place if you want to. So let's put a link in here. I'll just put a hashtag for a placeholder. And once I do that, the button's going to show up. Great. That's a default Divi button over there with the white writing and just a right white background. You can customize that easy, easily by either going to your design tab and down to button, or you can just roll over the button. If I move this over this side, we roll over the button. There's a little paintbrush associated with it. If you click on that, it'll take you straight to the design tab for the button. If you use custom styles for the button, just flip that to yes. You can change the button text size, button text color, button background, border width, button color, all kinds of things. You can really customize that button and we'll be going over that. Plenty of button icons to choose from. They have teamed up with Font Awesome, so there's plenty there. Okay, I'm going to put a big old image in the background because we'll use this as a bit of a hero section. Let's save this. I'm going to go up to the section, which is the blue tab, which covers the full screen here or full width of the screen, I should say. Always hit the cog to get in there. Backgrounds always under content. We can go down there and we'll do a video on these backgrounds here because there's a lot to choose from. In this one, I'm going to go straight for background image. I'm going to hit add background image. And yesterday we loaded a pre-made layout. And that's why we've got some images in here. When you load pre-made layout, obviously it needs to load the images as put you in your library right here. Okay, well, let's add an image for our background here. I'm simply going to select the image. I've got a folder full of images here. I'm going to select one. I'm just going to drag it up here and let go with my left mouse button. It's loaded the image there. You can put alt text in if you want to. All images should really have alt text to describe them for people that can't see very well use screen readers. A lot of people use this for keywords too. I'm not sure if that still works nowadays, but that's it. up to you if you want to use it. When you're happy, you can upload it. Now we're using this for a full screen image. For size wise, I'd probably use the full size for this, but for smaller things, you can choose smaller sizes and you always want to go with the smallest size you can for an image, but obviously it wants to look good. So when you're happy, hit upload image. And we've got a nice little image in the background there. Now that doesn't look too good. So still in the section, let's give it a bit more height here. And you can always adjust all modules, sections and rows in the design tab. You'll find sizing and spacing. And again, we'll be doing a whole module on this. Let's add some padding to the top to make this just a little bit deeper. Let's say give it 150 on the top. Just need to put in the 150 it'll put in the pics for you unless you want to use percentages or viewable height hit the chain and it'll do exactly the same on the opposite side 
once you've got the chain checked, if you change it here, it's going to change it on both sides. That's great. So we've got a great little background image in there. And what I'm going to do now is take the actual background away from here. So we just got the white writing stand out on it. So let's save that. We'll go back into the module, the dark tab. Content is always where you'll find background. To get rid of a background color or change it, this is where you go. Hit the trash can to get rid of it. Or if you want to change it or add another one, put a different one in there. And if you actually click on the color field itself, it's going to come up with two little sliders here. The stripey one, the variegated one over here, if you drag it down, it's opacity. And you'll start to see some of that image bleed through. Great way of making text stand out on busy images. And if we roll down a little bit more, we're still in the actual module settings here. You can give it rounded bolt borders and things like that. So if I go over to design, all of these modules have borders. You give it a pixel value up here. Make sure you've got that chain checked in the middle. It'll do all four at once. It'll give you little rounded corners there. Great. When you're happy, move on down to add a new section, little blue button. And they've got regular sections, specialty sections. If I click on it, it has sort of different types of layouts that are, that are different from the normal layouts. If I click on that again, you've also got full width. Full width is great, but you've got a, a smaller list of modules that are specifically built for full width. But you can make any row full width, which will make the module inside of it full width. Okay, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a regular section in. And again, choose whatever row. I'm going to wrap this up now. I'm going to just put a gallery down the bottom here and then we'll save the page. So we've added a new row. Let's add a new column. I'm just going to use a gallery module as I've got some images over here. Hit the little plus to add your gallery image. Or images, I should say. Select however many images you want to upload and drag them up there. Once loaded, select the ones you want. All the ones I've uploaded are checked there. I'm happy with that. To deselect, just left click on one of those check marks there to reselect. Just left click again. When you're happy, select all the images. And they'll load into the gallery, gallery just like that. Now to move one around, Simply left click on it, drag it, drop it where you want to put it. And if we roll down a little bit, I'm choosing to only show four at the moment. There's a lot more than that up there. Let's up that to eight. Great. And you can take away any elements down below by just turning them off like that. Now let's just give this a title. I'm going to add a new row here. This title wants to be above. I'm going to use a single column again. I'm going to use a little heading module. Let's just say our gallery. And again, I want to go to the straight the font decoration. It's an H1. I don't want it to be an H1 because that would be the page title, really. I'm going to make mine an H3. Font wise, Dewey has got a crazy amount of fonts. Go in there. To audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example. When you're happy, just click on it. I'm going to leave mine on the default today, but they really do have a huge amount of fonts to choose from. I'm going to make mine bold. I'm going to capitalize it. I'm going to pop it in the middle. I'm going to make it blue. Let's pop it up in size. If we roll down, you can make the letters further apart or closer together. Line height is the space below it will push any lines down it higher if you drag this up to the right. More space there. We can give it a bit of box shadow or text shadow, I should say, by doing that if you want to. Change the colors. On dark backgrounds, you can get some great effects using that. Let's just leave that there and we'll drag it up to the top and we'll call it a day on this video. Just a few of the things you can do with the Divi Builder. It's so easy to use. It's crazy. Once you're happy, hit the little purple button. 
save draft or publish if you're ready and exit the visual builder and there we are how easy was it to create a little page like this i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful don't forget if you've got any questions pop them down below i'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesign and tech tips .com. thanks for watching have a great day.